In the previous video, we saw a list requested by the travel agency showing all the tourist attraction categories. And for each category, it showed the list of attractions that had been entered. Let's now change the category of the Great Wall attraction so that Famous Landmark no longer has any associated attraction. Now we execute the list again. And as we can see, this list shows all the categories that have been entered, even those that don't have any associated attractions. If this is not what we want, that is to say, if we want to show only the categories that have attractions, then what do we do? We will implement this in another procedure. To do so, we save the one we had with another name. And let's change the title of the text block. If we examine the for each commands that we had implemented, we can see that the base table of the external for each command is category, and the base table of the nested for each command is attraction. We can confirm it by reading the navigation list. In this way, we first access the category table. Next, the record data is printed, and finally, the nested for each command is executed. As a result, the category will be printed before we know if it has related attractions or not. This is not what we need. We need to access the attractions categories because it is the only way to make sure that the category to be printed has at least one attraction. The idea is to group the attractions in the attraction table by category, and then go over those groups, printing the category for each of them, for which, we will have to access the category table in order to recover its name, in addition to printing each attraction in the group, to then move on to the next group, and so on. In sum, what we must do is go over the attraction table only, first grouping it by category and printing the category, and then printing from each category group, obviously by navigating the same attractions table, all the attractions in it. Let's note that the way in which we instruct Genexus that the grouping is to be done by category ID is by specifying the order clause. This case of nested for each's that go over the same table is known as control break. Now let's do the changes in our procedure. First, we change the transaction of the external for each and use attraction. Then, we add the order clause to sort by category ID which, in the case of the control break, will also apply to something more significant, for grouping by that attribute. Let's now execute. And we will see that, in fact, the famous landmark category, which does not include any attractions, is not part of the list. If we consider the resulting navigation list, we will see that it informs us about a for each to the attraction table ordered by category ID, which will be broken, break, by the nested for each on the same table, attraction. Note that in this break, only the attractions in the category of that group are run through. So now, let's conceptualize the definition of a control break. It relates to nested for each's, with the same base table for all of the for each's, and the order clause to establish the break criteria. Now let's look at another situation. Suppose we need to list only those categories that have registered tourist attractions. How can we go about it? If we look at the transaction design, we clearly see that the categories related to some tourist attractions are those found in attraction as a foreign key. To make it easier, we've already created a list to show the names of categories. So the first thing we can think of is a for each command with attraction as the base transaction and then list the name of the category. We run it, and although this list effectively shows the name of the categories that have some associated attraction, those names are repeated because, for example, there are several attractions that are monuments. Therefore, monument as a category name is listed several times. How can we control that these listed names are not repeated? In other words, that they're shown only once, using the unique clause. This clause allows us to indicate the attribute or set of attributes whose value should not be repeated in the query output. These attributes must belong to the extended table of the foreach command. We run the list again, 
and see that this clause is included in the navigation list. Now we see that the category names are only listed once. To conclude this, we update the changes in Genexus server. In these videos, we've seen how Genexus facilitates the determination of simple listings that navigate a single table, or more complex listings that navigate information in several related tables, join, or in the same table, but grouped by some particular criterion, control break. The command that we use in all cases for accessing the database is the for each. In the first case, we used a simple for each where we inferred the table to be navigated through its base transaction. In the second case, we have a pair of nested for eaches where, from different base transactions, we discover a relation of one to many amongst the information of each for each. While in the third case, we also have a couple of nested for eaches, but in this case, their base transactions are the same. Genexus then understands that we want to break or group the information from the table that is to be run through by the attribute or the group of attributes specified in the order clause of the external for each. Further ahead, we will see other mechanisms to implement queries to the database for obtaining information in a flexible and appealing manner.